Yes, I'm talking uh, today about uh, supplements. Um, so I'm Andrew, I'm a nutritional therapist at Wildview Retreat and the head of the wellness and nutrition program there. Um, and um, I um, was utterly confused about supplements six or seven years ago um, before I retrained as a nutritional therapist. I had absolutely no idea what I was taking, why I was taking. I just was trying to take stuff to, to try and improve my, my health. And um, I really had no idea uh, what I was taking. And I get a lot of guests telling me that uh, they're taking stuff, but they don't really know what it's doing or why they're taking it. Um, and why would they? We don't get trained in this stuff. We don't ever get uh, taught it at school, um, which is um, a crime in itself, really, because I really feel this sort of stuff should be taught to us so that we know what we're, what we're doing. Um, but also, a lot of the stuff that we're uh, gleaning from the internet is absolute nonsense that has a huge financial incentive behind their marketing spins on any of these supplements. So um, we are kind of buying things based on people's incentives for profit rather than you know actual health benefits for ourselves individually. So I'm going to do a little, I'm doing this little video now just to explain the basics of supplements and um, hopefully it'll be helpful. The good thing about it is that I'm not affiliated to any of these companies. Um, so I've got no financial incentive to tell you uh, to buy a certain thing or not, I couldn't care less to be honest about that. Um, but what I do care about is that people are taking the right things and improving their health and being happier and healthier basically. Um, so um, if anybody would like to uh, comment, uh, I don't know whether I, where I see the comments on this, <laughs> but I'll try see if there's something comes up. If not, I'll answer it at the end. Um, and if you want to share any information on what supplements you're taking, I can answer, um, and if you um, and if you want to share the video uh, for others who might think it's helpful, that'd be great. Okay, so my first point I wanted to say is um, why should we take supplements? Um, you know, people ask me, you know, as long as I've got a healthy diet, what's the what's the point in taking supplements? Well, I uh, am a professional nutritional therapist, and I take supplements, even though I know exactly what foods I need to be eating in order to perform functions in my body, in order to feel optimal on all levels. So I do that. Um, but I also take these supplements. So why do I do that? The reason why is because it's incredibly difficult, no matter how much you know about macro and micronutrients, to ensure that in a busy daily life with the various different foods that are available, that you're absolutely making sure that you're getting the right vitamins and minerals and fats, proteins and carbs, etc., all that sort of stuff into your body on a daily basis. Um, so it's one way really of capturing all and just making sure that you are getting those things daily. When you know what functions they perform in the body, uh, you end up being incentivized to make sure that you're doing that on a daily basis, especially after five or six months when you start to feel significantly better mentally, emotionally, physically, uh, when you're optimizing your nutrition, your nutrition. So that's why one of the reasons why I do supplement is because even though I know loads about nutrition, I can't guarantee that every day I will be ensuring that I'm eating the right quantities of all these different things that contains all these different nutrients. The second reason is because the mineral and vitamin uh, uh, content of our, um, our food that we're eating now is nothing like what um, it would have been um, in 1920 or 1820. You know, 2020, our soils have been mass worked, chemicals, fertilizers, all the minerals removed from them as, the, uh, as they've been taken up and absorbed by the carrots and the sweet potatoes. And fast forward, you know, what is it? Something like 200 years, 150, 660 years of industrial action on the farms. Um, you can guarantee that the mineral and vitamin content of the fruits and vegetables and phytonutrients that is in them, nothing like what it would have been. So we are all nutrient deficient. That is a fact. We are all nutrient deficient, especially when you add in the mass processed food from the supermarkets that we are um, consuming on a daily basis. And as I'm sure you're all aware, if you're nutrient deficient, um, your body and your organs, your systems do not have the various cofactors in order to perform their functions. And then, of course, after about three or four months, you start to feel a bit rubbish. That then leads into an acute illness. 
ultimately a chronic disease. So we should be highly incentivized to optimize our nutrition. And obviously we do that with diet, but we can also make sure that we are bulletproof by doing the right supplements. So um, what supplements uh, do I recommend that you take uh, in order to be bulletproof daily? Now, obviously there's loads of things out there on the market and there's also loads of um, different types and it's incredibly confusing, incredibly confusing. You know, what ones do you take? What are the essential ones? What are the dosages? You're never expected to know that. You really aren't. I mean, how would we? Um, so hopefully I'm gonna give you a little bit of information now. There are, in my opinion, six, I can't count, six um, key supplements that everybody really should be taking. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend, um, you know, for kids, but certainly when you get into sort of middle age, adult life, 30s, 40s onwards, everyone should be taking these supplements. So the first one I recommend is an incredibly good quality multivitamin and mineral. Now, um, they're everywhere, but uh, do not make the mistake of going to uh, Holland and Barrett or a pharmacy or... Um, a super drug or a boots and going with one of the uh, big mass produced companies because they are selling you a product that is woefully inadequate um, and they're selling it to you based on the fact that um, they they know that you don't know what the right dosages and um, and uh, type of vitamins are actually in their supplement so vitabiotics um, what are the other ones um, seven C's uh, Sainsbury's own brand, Holland and Barrett's own brand, anything you see in the pharmacy where their main incentive is to sell drugs and Kit Kats, not, not actual good quality nutrient supplements. Don't bother with any of those places. Um, you really do get what you pay for. And I was actually with a client today. Um, I said it's absolutely pointless buying your supplements from any of those places. You will not get um, the therapeutic value and content of what you need. It's a complete waste of money. You may as well just throw your money down the drain. The other thing that's a complete waste of money is only doing this dipping into it once or twice a, uh, a week you know this is if you're going to do it you may as well do it you may as well go whole hog and make it part of your lifestyle routine or daily routine in the morning so you know you get up you have a shower um, you brush your teeth you have your breakfast you take your supplements there's no point doing that uh, no point doing this by the way if you're just doing it once or twice a week it just won't do anything for you it's completely pointless so it has to become part of a routine and it's only one that once that starts to happen, you will get the therapeutic benefit from doing this. Okay, so the multivitamin, the multimineral. So I'm going to have got a few examples here. There's just loads of different types out there. So the brands that I would really be recommending, if you go into any good quality private independent uh, store, you will see um, the likes of um, um, uh, Terra Nova. Um, you'll see the likes of Wild Nutrition. You'll see the likes of... Um, uh, uh, yeah, Wild Nutrition, you'll see the likes of Nutri Advanced, and you'll see lots of different types. So go into any of those stores and you'll get uh, into the sort of brands you should be taking. But I absolutely love Life Extension. They're an American company with a European arm. Now they do a fantastic multivitamin, um, which is very high strength. And um, it's got all of the, I mean, if you look on the back, you obviously uh, will, not, will not know what all of these do, but uh, a trained nutritional therapist will know what all they do and they, all this does. It has fantastic amounts of uh, vitamins and minerals, but also a couple of extra phytonutrients as well at the bottom. But most importantly, it's the, it's the dosage, as in the quantity of those uh, nutrients here, which is so woefully inadequate on, say, Whole and Barrett supplements, um, and also the form that they're in. So, for example, folic acid, you should never buy anything with folic acid. It should be folate, the, 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 the natural form, and ideally methylfolate, and likewise B12 cobalamin, it should be uh, methylcobalamin. Anyway, fantastic supplement. Now, you can either do one a day or two a day. Now, my wife takes the uh, two a day because um, she doesn't mind taking one uh, in the morning and one later on the day, um, and that's because it's capsules, much easier to swallow, whereas I'm a little bit like a horse, I can literally just down a whole load of these, so I take uh, the one a day, it's exactly the same, Two of these capsules are the same as one of those uh, tablets. So I take the one. So you've got different options there. But there's lots of other great ones. So BioCare do a fantastic multi. Um, there's lots of great ones out there. But make sure your multivitamin is good quality. Don't scrimp on that. 
Okay, the next thing, I always recommend vitamin C. Now you may ask me, why are you recommending vitamin C when there's vitamin C in this? Well, absolutely, there is vitamin C in this, but not enough, okay? Uh, again, it's because um, um, it would be too big a capsule or a supplement if they, if they put uh, enough vitamin C. Now, what you must remember is that NHS, they recommend 40 milligrams a day of NHS as part of their recommended daily allowance. That's just about enough to prevent you from getting scurvy. It's quite ridiculous, really. Um, you've got to remember that uh, it's water-soluble vitamin, and it's excreted from the kidneys every three or four hours. So unless you're replacing vitamin C every three or four hours, then you will not be having optimized plasma levels of vitamin C. So um, now I'm not suggesting that you go out and just take vitamin C three, to, you know, every three hours. You know, you've got to have the balance here. But what I am saying is that you need to be putting vitamin C into, into your mouth somehow a couple of times a day because it's water soluble and it is excreted. It doesn't build up in the fat and doesn't stay with you. So vitamin C is excreted daily. So you have to replenish it. So for me, the way I do that is I take a thousand milligrams in the morning and another thousand later on in the day. And that way I ensure that my plasma levels are optimized with uh, vitamin C. Okay. So um, the other thing uh, people uh, are getting a bit confused about now is um, liposomal vitamin C, uh, spraying vitamin C, all of that sort of stuff. Yes, liposomal vitamin C is the liquid form and it's much more bioavailable. So what that means is that um, it's going to be absorbed into your bloodstream much faster, going to get to the cell much more effectively than, say, a capture or a tablet, which will have to go into the digestive system and be broken down chemically and mechanically and then absorbed through into the system and go through the liver and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yes, you could absolutely take liposomal vitamin C. There's lots of products out there, out nutrient, etc., etc. But what I would say is that this is a maintenance dose supplement, and therefore you're taking it every day, and hopefully all of us are going to have at least another 20, 30, 40 years left of our lives. And if you are, um, if you're um, taking it every day, you're going to want to make it cost effective. So I don't necessarily recommend liposomal vitamin C daily unless you're recovering from a COVID, you're recovering from a man flu, a flu sorry, a flu, you're recovering from a, um, a, um, uh, a pneumonia or some significant viral bacterial infection, then you perhaps go for the liposomal form, you know, really full dose of it. But for me, maintenance dose, a capsule of a thousand milligrams, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, is absolutely brilliant. And I would do that on top of the multivitamin because the multivitamin, even though it's incredibly high strength, um, amount of vitamin C per day, 470 milligrams. That's actually one of the best you're going to get on the market with life extension. But most of them you'll see is like 80 or 90. It's no way near enough. Like I said, the NHS recommended daily allowance of vitamin C is 40 milligrams. It's embarrassing. Uh, it's just about enough to prevent you from getting scurvy. So do yourself a favor, folks. Optimize your plasma levels of vitamin C. Uh, improve your immune system. Reduce your risk of respiratory illness. And uh, get your plasma levels of vitamin C optimized. A couple of grams a day. Okay. Uh, the other thing to remember is that typically you'd want a timed release one. So you could go for a slightly more expensive uh, 1,000 milligram supplement and go for one that says timed release. That way it's a slow release of the 1,000 milligrams. So you're not going to be peeing it out straight away. Um, okay, so that's number two. All right. Number three, can you guess? <laughs> it's, uh, it's magnesium. Okay, again, life extension, but you can go for all different types. Cytoplan, BioCare, um, uh, Terra Nova, Nutri Advanced, any of those good quality ones. But why magnesium? Again, you might ask me, well, you've got magnesium already in the multi. Why, Andrew, do I need to take more magnesium? Well, magnesium um, is the most um, deficient mineral in the human body, besides iron. Uh, and the reason why iron is high up there is because half the population is women and with menstrual bleeding, etc., etc., etc. So if we just discount that for the second. Um, magnesium throughout the cohort of you know, all human beings is the most uh, deficient mineral in the body. Why? Because it is significantly depleted by stress and cortisol. And we are all stressed uh, human beings. Uh, if you think about 2021 compared to 1821, um, we are a lot more stressed than we would have been back then. So we're constantly depleting magnesium because of our lifestyle, but also because of our diet. The main way we get our magnesium is from green cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, spinaches, kales, etc., etc. And you may say to me, hey, Andrew, I eat loads of that stuff. You know, I don't need magnesium. But remember what I said at the start. The mineral content of your food is 
significantly reduced compared to 1920, compared to 2021. And that is because the broccoli or wherever and the soil within which it was grown has pretty had, had much of the minerals sucked out of it the harvest before and the harvest before that and the harvest before that and that and that and that. And then adding all the chemicals and stuff, I mean, there's barely any minerals left in the soil anyway. So um, that, is what, and that is one of the reasons why we've got such poor levels of magnesium in the body. And the magnesium is critically important for a number of different functions. And people don't really know what they are, but I'll just quickly run through what they are. Number one, heart health in the arteries. Helps to keep the arteries dilated. Incredibly important for anybody who's at risk of cardiovascular disease and hypertension. Uh, number two, critically important for energy production in the Krebs cycle. It's a major, major cofactor in producing your energy from glucose and the B vitamins plus magnesium turns into ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So it's incredibly important for producing your energy. So magnesium, uh, very important for that. And the third thing, very important amongst other things, is nervous system health. So I'm sure you're all aware of why, you know, magnesium baths, magnesium sprays to reduce the tension in your shoulders. Well, why does it do that? Well, the musculoskeletal system uh, contracting and, um, and uh, uh, relaxing muscles uh, through this action um, relies on energy molecules and calcium to contract and then magnesium to relax. So all of our muscles, um, from a molecular point of view, are requiring on the cofactor of magnesium to relax. And if we don't have, don't have enough magnesium, then our muscles become tight and stressed. And that's why you tend to feel that tightness in your shoulders. Now, I used to take magnesium spray on my shoulders when I used to work in a city in London. And it was, um, it was good. You know, I could take it at night. I had that itchy, horrible itchiness. But, you know, I would really calm my shoulders and get rid of all those tension headaches. It was fantastic. But it was quite reaction, reactionary to my situation. So what I just do now and what has served me very well ever since was just capsule of magnesium every day as part of my daily routine that keeps my plasma levels of magnesium optimized daily now some people say you can take it at night yes if you can remember it can be bothered that's great do it at night because it'll help you relax in the evening as well uh, but I just take it in the morning um, and, it, and it's also got completely got rid of my muscle cramps that I used to get in my calves um, but that's also because I'm hydrating better okay so that's number three so we've done the multivitamin we've done the, the vitamin C and we've done the magnesium the third thing that is critically important, vitamin D. Now, why? Um, again, you might say, well, Andrew, I take a multivitamin. Um, again, exactly the same reason why we do additional vitamin D. And the reason why is because um, there's never really enough in these. This is probably one of the only ones I've found that has just about enough vitamin D3 in it. It's got about 2,000 international units. That's actually quite a decent dose, generally. Um, but um, if you're taking a normal multivitamin, it's highly likely that it'll hardly have any vitamin D in it. And it'll probably have vitamin D2 in it, which you do not want. Vitamin D2 is about 30% as bioavailable as vitamin D3. So check your vitamin D supplement, make sure it's vitamin D3, okay? So vitamin D3, how much do you take? Well, it's an absolute lottery. And, um, and I'm really quite hot on this actually now because all of my life, I've been vitamin D deficient. I've had, you know, anxiety, low mood, borderline bouts of depression, um, respiratory illness, tonsillitis as a child, upper respiratory tract infections, all due to vitamin D deficiency. Whenever I went to get my blood test at the NHS, uh, always come back within range. And I would just go, oh, thanks very much, doctor. Cheers. See you later. Off I go. Unbeknown to me, for 30 years, I was right on the border of the deficient amount of vitamin D3 all my life all my life on this massive range, deficient in vitamin D. But of course, the NHS and the doctor, bless them, you know, they are heavily under-resourced and time-constrained. They're only going to intervene and spend money on you if you become a medical emergency. They're not going to intervene on you if you're you know, feeling a bit bleh. So take a copy of your NHS results, take a copy of your blood test result, interrogate them, check the ranges. Are you happy with them? Thankfully, when I train, retrain in nutrition, I quickly discovered that my NHS blood tests have been telling me every year that my blood levels are low, but they weren't doing anything about it. So I am someone who needs to optimise my vitamin D levels significantly, generally. But why, why are my vitamin D levels low? You know, I have someone who's always migrated to the sun. You know, my first 10 years of my career as a marine biologist, I lived in Fiji for two years. I lived in the Middle East. I lived in Micronesia. I was always in the sun. I was always migrating there 
because I was desperately in need of vitamin D and it made me feel better when I went there. And as soon as I came back to the UK, I felt miserable. A lot of people feel that. It's called SAD, seasonal, um, seasonal something disorder. Anyway, um, we, we all know that we get low mood without vitamin D, right? And that is because vitamin D is a cofactor in the conversion of tryptophan to serotonin, but that's another topic. Anyway, why was I so badly in need of vitamin D as a human being, more so than Joe Bloggs next to me? The reason why, and again, another critical bit of information I've now discovered, having worked with Life Code GX, I'm a, a functional practitioner with their um, genetics company, is that I've got significant mutations on the gene involved in receiving vitamin D. The VDR gene, vitamin D receptor, I've got double red homozygous single nucleotide polymorphisms mutations on my vitamin D receptor. That basically means um, I could be standing there in the sun in Benidorm next to you and you would be absorbing loads of vitamin C and getting, sorry, vitamin D and getting everything in you need and I'd be sitting there kind of getting barely anything, anything. So I walk away from that sun exposure with very little vitamin D whereas you've got loads or vice versa. So unless you, I mean, let's say, for example, you've always had low, low vitamin D levels and you've not really known why. It's highly likely, because I see it in a lot, I've done well over 200 consultations in the last six months on the Life Code GX genetic reports. I see it, it is prevalent, especially in British society, European society, we are, all of us, vitamin D deficient, typically due to variants on our transporter genes and our vitamin D receptor genes. Anyway, that was the case for me and my father, grandfather and all the all, and a lot of them in my father's side of the family so as a result of that the standard 2000 well let's go back a thread how much does the, the gp give you when you're vitamin d deficient 400 iu nothing it's nothing oh my god it's nothing it's nothing it's nothing don't do anything um the standard amount just to feel normal would be about 2000 iu but i in order to get my levels up to optimum range i need to take 8000 iu of vitamin D3 a day, 8,000 IU of vitamin D3 a day. And I'm sure you're not, you're going, oh my God, that, oh my God, you're going to kill yourself. Well, the thing is, is that I would only recommend taking your vitamin D3 once you know what your blood level is like. And the reason why is because it's a fat soluble vitamin and therefore unlike B vitamins and um, vitamin C water soluble, which you excrete daily, vitamins A, D, E and K, vitamin D, it builds up in your tissues. And so yes, if you take lots and lots and lots, it can become too much and build, build up a toxicity. Very, very rare, highly unlikely. So I'd always recommend a, a vitamin D test. NHS don't do it, they're, they're, they're under-resourced, under-financed. You have to beg them for it. So I wouldn't even bother. I would just take a 32 pound finger prick test from betteryou.com, poop on the litmus paper, off it goes in the post, back a week later, thank you very much, there's my results. But do not take the adequate answer that it says. It will say 50 micromoles per litre adequate and put it on the shelf. Thanks very much. I'm done. Don't take that for an answer. You're taking the number and you're checking that you're between 100 and 150 micromoles per litre. That is optimal. It doesn't say that on the ranges. It doesn't say on the ranges. You need to be between 100 and 150 micromoles per litre. So if any of you have got a vitamin D test to hand, which hopefully you all do have a result handy in the last year, go and check it. Go and have a look at it. Go and make sure that your vitamin D levels are in that range. If it's below that, you need to increase it slightly. Now, do not be confused with the other unit of vitamin D typically used in America, which is uh, NG per litre or something like that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about micromoles, which is MMOL per L, right? The typical one used in Britain. So check that. And um, so you want to be between 100 and 150 micromoles per litre of vitamin uh, D3, uh, and that's where you wanna be. And for me, 32 pound blood tests in the post, uh, once a year, thanks very much. I can monitor my vitamin D levels yearly. And you can do a number of different things. You can use um, capsules or, or tablets, different types, um, or you can use um, sprays. This is also, this is Better You, which is again, the company I just mentioned uh, that does the finger prick blood test. Um, you also get that in Holman Barrett. It's pretty much the only thing I'm going to recommend to you that you can get from Holman Barrett. <laughs> uh, but you could, you know, it's just a general company that's everywhere now. We used to use this a lot, me and Erica, um, but we don't use it anymore because it ended up being expensive. You don't really get much bang for your buck. Um, so now I just go with the capsules, uh, much better value. Um, you'll also notice this one is vitamin D3 plus K2. 
So I just take vitamin D3. Why? And why does Erica take vitamin D3 plus K2? Now, you'll see this everywhere now in all the, all the companies, supermarkets, um, supplement companies. What, what they're doing is they're producing a formula with vitamin K2, which K2 you typically get from b bacterial uh, digestion, but also from your green vegetables. But a lot of people don't have enough vitamin K2, and vitamin K is important for blood coagulation to prevent blood thinning and bleeding and hemorrhaging, right? Um, but it's also critically important for directing the calcium that gets it taken out of the blood by the vitamin D and gets dumped in the bone. And the vitamin K does that, okay? And it dumps it in the bone rather than in the arteries. You don't want to calcify the arteries. That's the danger of just taking vitamin K D on its own because it might just bring the, the, the um, calcium out of the blood and dump it anywhere that needs to be calcified, arteries included. So the vitamin K will direct it to the bones. Now, why Erica in particular? Two reasons why Erica is taking the vitamin K2 with her D3, and the reason why I'm just taking the D3. Number one, she is female. Now, of course, she's not at perimenopausal stage yet, but as soon as you reach perimenopause stage, menopause stage, your estrogen declines. I'm just talking to women at the moment, obviously. Uh, when estrogen declines, um, then um, you start to suffer from bone mineral density deformation in the bones, and, uh, leading to osteoporosis. So really, really important that you do everything leading up to this point to make sure your bones are nice and strong. And you do that with vitamin D but plus the K2. Now, I wouldn't recommend plus the K2 to anyone who's got um, cardiovascular disease in the family, high blood pressure, cholesterol, because remember I said it, vitamin K is a blood coagulator um, um, and you necessarily, wouldn't necessarily want to compromise uh, and, and thicken the blood necessarily. So you might stick with the D3. So it really depends on your exact situation. But for women in particular, vitamin D3 plus K2 is important, especially as you reach perimenopause and menopause stage uh, to prevent osteoporosis for the reason I just described. The second reason why Erica uh, takes the D3 uh, plus K2 is because again, the Life Code GX genetic report, nutrient core report that we did, it showed that she's got red homozygous single nucleotide polymorphisms on her vitamin K gene, which basically means that she has an inability to process it very well. So she is predisposed from birth with an inability to uh, coagulate her blood and also direct the calcium from the blood into the bone whilst using vitamin D. So that's why she does that. So um, I realize I'm actually saying a lot more than I was going to. And if any of this is confusing, you can always rewind and replay that bit. Um, so I hope that's a bit helpful. Now, the final thing that I recommend, so we've done the multivitamin and mineral, why that's critically important. We've done the vitamin C additional, why that's critically important. We've done the magnesium, why that's critically important. And um, now we're going to do the next thing. Can any of you guess what it is? I don't see any comments anywhere, so I don't know if anyone's commenting. I'll probably see all that later. Uh, but anyway, um, the, the final maintenance dose, routine, daily care supplement that I would recommend going forward for the rest of our days uh, is something that's not included in a multi, and that is a fat, uh, because it's called omega-3. Okay, so um, can I show you this? No, I'll bring it up to you in a minute. So why am I recommending omega-3 daily? Um, a number of reasons. Um, we don't have enough omega-3 in the diet, generally, in the Western diet. We have way too much omega-6 without us even realizing, and that comes in all the processed foods that we eat. So every time you have a biscuit, every time you have a bit of cake, every time you have a bit of mayonnaise, every, every time you have anything that comes in the packet, the main fats in that will be hydrogenated and will be um, manufactured, and it's basically something called omega-6. Uh, and what we want is a nice, healthy balance of omega-3, 6, and 9, and it's typically omega-3 that we have very, very little of, very, very little of. Okay, so, uh, and that's because we're not eating enough nuts and seeds, and we're also certainly not eating enough oily fish. Now, I know there's been a big push for that recently, oily fish. We call it the smash fish. I'm sure if you were here uh, in, if we were in the conversation, I would ask you what does smash mean, but I'm sure a lot of you know. Salmon, mackerel, anchovy, sardine, herring. Those are the pelagic, highly migratory, ocean-dwelling fish that have lots of oil in their tissues. Incredibly important. That's where the omega-3 is. Now, I know that a lot of people don't want to take uh, uh, oily fish for a lot of very important ethical reasons, 
overfishing. We all watch the uh, spiracy, it's absolutely devastating. I used to be a marine biologist, I'm fully aware of the problems with with uh, overfishing and, and salmon farming, etc. Um, and also pregnant women certainly wouldn't want to be taking oily fish because the, um, as much because, as, at all actually, because of the heavy metal toxicity that builds up in, in pelagic fish as the, as the toxins go up the food chain. So um, yes, oily fish, slightly controversial, but you can take um, good quality omega-3 fish oil. Um, uh, I like to take Wiley's Finest Alaskan Fish Oil, um, this one. Wiley's Finest Alaskan Fish Oil. The reason why I like it is a number of reasons. Number one, um, it's got the Marine Stewardship Council certification. That is the certification of seafood that has um, not is that is sustainably fished, so it's not being the seas aren't being raped for that. The second reason why I like this is because they use pollock, not salmon. Another reason why I like it is because got, the most important reason really is because of the EPA and DHA content. Okay. When you're looking for your omega-3, I actually just did a post on my stories of a really good quality biocare supplement called Mega EPA Forte. Mega EPA Forte. 1,000 milligrams of omega-3, very high EPA and DHA content. That is the molecular structure of the omega-3 is what we want. Now, if you go into Hull and Barrett five years ago, they just sell you omega-3, absolute crap. It says omega-3, you'll take it. You think, okay, that's fine, that does the job. I notice now they're actually starting to put the EPA, DP, EPA DHA content on it. So, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit better, but certainly you get what you pay for. I just think wide berth as far as I'm concerned. Um, I love Wiley's fast, fast and Fish Oil. The other reason why I love it is because Erica, she doesn't do the liquid. Uh, so I take the liquid, she takes the capsules. So, so some people would much prefer just to take the capsules. But why am I taking the liquid and bothering with that? And Erica doing the capsules well, it's, I guess it's kind of obvious, but the liquid, you're always going to get a higher concentration, a higher D EPA and DHA content of, um, of the fish oil, right? So just remember, okay, you're buying the product, but make sure you read the label, read the back of it. Is it actually five capsules that you need to take daily to get what it's saying? Is it, you know, is it two capsules you need or can you just do it with one? Check it because... But off the time, they tell you, oh, 1,000 milligrams of omega-3, it's great. And then you look on the back and the small print, you actually got to take 15 capsules or something, and, it's the, and the bottle's over in two minutes. So this one's a pretty good one. It's one I rate. Um, but I prefer to take the oil, and I leave it in the fridge, and I just take a little swig in the morning. Erica can't do that. She has to take the capsules. I also quite like Nordic oil. I'm taking that one at the moment. Again, what's this? So this is, so in a 5 mil um, uh, spoon, teaspoon, it's got um, 1,400 milligrams, 1 1.4 grams of omega-3, of which 740 to 825 is, is, is EPA, and 460 to 550 is DHA. So this one here, so two capsules of Wiley's is um, 900 milligrams. So you now you can see the difference, right? Two capsules of that versus a swig of that, you're already getting you know, only two thirds of what's in there. Um, EPA 360. DHA 270, so, so significantly less than what's in here, but Erica can only do that because you just can't stomach swallowing uh, oil or she'll, or she'll chuck up. So whatever, whatever works for you. Now I'm sure uh, one of the questions that you might ask if you're in the room, or if I could read comments, I don't even know if there's any comments. Oh, someone's listening, uh, Duska. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, thanks. Thanks, interesting information. Good, thanks. I'm glad it's interesting. Ask me any questions whilst I'm here. I'll answer afterwards as well, you know, when it goes, when I, when I press the publish button. But if you've got any questions on any of this, please fire away. Um, a lot of people will say to me, well, is a vegan supplement okay for omega-3? Well, I would say it's absolutely fine if um, you um, understand that you're not going to get anywhere near the therapeutic content as you would with a, with a fish oil, unfortunately. Why is that? Well, the reason why the fish has got so much omega-3 in it in the first place is because it's gone up through the food chain, right? And it's, and it's increased in amount as it's gone up through the food chain. Whereas if it's a vegan one coming from algae, then it's a very small amount because it's minimal in the first place, right? So um, you have to understand that your vegan supplement will be um, significantly lower value of EPA and DHA. So what I would do is next time you go into Whole Foods or Planet Organic or any of these good quality health stores, Pull up the vegan one, pull up the fish one, and just check the back, check the EPA and DHA, and just see for yourself. Um, 
But if you if you do have to do the vegan one, and that's obviously absolutely fine for ethical reasons and, and other reasons, but I'm talking purely from a health perspective here, then you're going to have to spend more money. You know, you might end up having to have five or six capsules to get anywhere near the same amount as the omega three uh, from the from the from the um, oily fish. Um, and I always tell my clients that um, if you are able to afford uh, one of the one of these smash fish uh, regularly throughout the week. Um, then, um, then, 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 let's say, for example, you're having some smoked salmon for salad for salad one day, and then you might be having um, a little bit of tuna one evening. Then on those days, you you don't need to do the supplement, right? So just every day have it. But if you're having oily fish, and you don't necessarily need to on that particular day, okay. So loads of information there. I could talk loads more, and there's lo there's a more. I take more supplements than that because of my specific genetics. Uh, because of the cofactors I need to up and down regulate various factors in my body, my nervous system and my cardiovascular system. But um, those are my maintenance dose daily supplements that I believe everybody over the age of 40 at least should be onto. Okay, um, maybe the omega-3 you could dial down if you are someone that's noticing that you're getting a bit more bruising, because it, in high dose it can cause a little bit of hemorrhaging. Not, it's not like life-threatening or anything. Please don't be scared by that. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit like the vaccine, I guess. It's you know, I shouldn't really talk about the vaccine, but you know, in the long run, you're much better off getting it than not getting it, if that makes sense. So it's the same with the omega-3. You're much better off, to, way much more better off taking it than not taking it because we just don't get enough in the diet. Um, yes, okay, so I think I might leave it there. Oh, I've got a question. Eli, hi. Ellie, Ellie, sorry, not Eli. My biggest doubt is really when to take K2 because of D. I don't quite get what you mean. When is when to take K2 because of D? Are you saying when to take K2 separately because of D? Um, well, typically I would just take it together as one supplement. There's so many out there that um, that, 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 that that will sell you a vitamin D3 plus K2 supplement. You can either have the drops, more bioavailable. You could have the spray, or you could have the capsules. Um, but like I said previously, um, if you are someone who has got high cholesterol, high blood pressure, concerned about saturated fat in the diet and think, worried about blockages, strokes, hemorrhages, cardiovascular disease, um, then you might want to be a bit careful with your vitamin K, as I said, because it does coagulate and thicken the blood as well as do this other function of directing the blood calcium into the bone together. Uh, yeah, I, I'd take it together, Ellie. I don't think there's any. Um, I don't. I, I don't. I mean, I don't. I. I. In my in my limited seven years expertise, I don't know of any reason, and and I don't mean that facetiously. It is limited. I've only done seven years of training, and you know, there's people out there who may know a lot more than me. But yeah, I think it's fine to take the two together. And, and in fact, that's a very good question. Really, it's just prompted me to think. You know, a lot of questions are, well, when should I take them? Can I take them all together? Do we need to do it at night or in the morning? Da, da, da. All of this stuff can be taken together in the morning. Um, uh, typically with food to prevent any kind of, I don't know, whack uh, of, of nausea that you might get on an empty stomach. I would just take it with your with your smoothie or, whatever, or your Buddha bowl, or whatever it is you do for your uh, brunch. Um, you can take your magnesium in the evening. I mean, I would recommend that if you're struggling to sleep. Um, but, you know, I'm a lazy male and I can't, be, I can't be bothered with that. So I just take my magnesium in the morning um, with the rest. So, yeah, okay. I don't think there's any other questions. So, unless there's any other questions, I might leave it there. Um, actually, see, ten people are listening. That's fantastic. So I'll just I'll just use the opportunity to say, uh, Wild View Retreat, kickstarting again on September the fourth, end of next week, and um, that particular week is fully booked. But we do have um, spaces for the vegetarian food retreat, eighteenth uh, to the twenty fifth. Of September and there are a few spaces on the October retreats as well. Um, daily nutrition talks from either myself or one of my colleagues, all uh, BANT registered, British Association of Nutritional Therapists registered uh, nutrition talks, uh, fitness less, uh, lessons, fitness uh, uh, um, sessions each day, HIIT classes, um, yoga classes by fantastic staff, guided walks, sauna, pool, hammocks, vitamin C, vitamin D, what's not to love. Um, so, um, anybody wants to come, uh, there's a, still a few places left. Anyway, I really hope that was helpful. If you like the video, 
give it a, give it a like. Obviously, that helps with the algorithms and all that. Helps us. Uh, if you've got any other comments on any of this, please make a note after. Uh, I will then respond in the next few days. Uh, and if you think anyone would be benefit from listening to this talk um, about maintenance dose supplements, then um, yeah, please share it. Again, you know that would help us. Given that you know, obviously we're just helping, but we're also just trying to um, cast the net so that people find out about Wildview Retreat as well. Um, okay, um, great to, uh, to, to to well, I was about to say great to see you. I didn't see anybody here. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye bye.